Welcome everybody. Here we are live from the Canon Club, San Juan, Puerto Rico, with Jan de Sopo and myself, Jose Ramos Santana. Jose Santana. Ramos Santana. Uh, Kiko. 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 And Campeche. <laughs> and Campeche. Who's decided uh, to behave today. Yes. He's with this, us for a while. This is wonderful to be here with <laughs> all of you today again. Welcome and, all. Uh, Lovely to have you. This have is another the house, interesting evening. The home of the Stanway Society. She's the founder and the director of the Stanway Society of Puerto Rico here at Gallery Inn. Uh, watch us live daily at 6 p.m. at thecanon.club. Uh, subscribe, you can subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram, except Instagram is not working today, but nevertheless, oh, it may the come. You never show know. will it's be always. recorded and you can later on have access to, to it. Turn so the that music off. Any problem. So, well, we're, we're having a fantastic week of artists. Um, and uh, today we have a very, very special guest, uh, the Puerto Rican violinist, Jose Miguel Cueto, who uh, have had a wonderful career uh, in the States and abroad. Uh, he's not as well known here in the in the island, his country, but nevertheless, he those who remember him have a great esteem for him. He's been out and busy. He's been out and busy Very around busy the world, doing a lot of fun and things. And other great ambassadors. Which we're going to hear about of this island today. So we're going to have uh, Jose Cueto with us. Hello, Jose. Are you there? There hello, we are. Hello. Hello. <laughs> happy to be here. Yes, happy that we're here and that you're joining us. And um, I was just before we started this show, I was good. thinking this is a great way of getting to know everybody around the world. And this takes off the walls of geographics, and we have access to you, people in Shanghai people in Barcelona, in New York, that we wouldn't have had anyway, uh, because again, the geographic, the traveling, but nevertheless said that uh, everyone who has been in the show is more than invited to come when things get back to normal. And also we hope that we all, you all can come and visit this wonderful place and Jan de Sopo the great artist and hostess, oh. and one of the greatest Puerto Pearl Ricans I know. Of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she was born in New Haven, but <laughs> that's all right. You know, New York. So, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and uh, anyway, Jose, it's about you. The show. Tell us what? what you have been doing throughout all this pandemic. How has well, it affected you? How, what plans do you have? How does yeah. it look? Let's start well, with the first, first thing I, I want to say is um, to wish everybody well and to be safe. Yes. Uh, because we're all in the same boat. Yes. Uh, staying at home, wearing the mask, right. staying distant, you know, the, re the six feet and, right. and all that. Um, but uh, I must say that because of the fact that we cannot do what we normally would be doing, like for example, I would have been playing operas all these months, the three months that we have uh, gone through the, through the pandemic. Um, but you have time to reflect, you have time to finish projects that you had started at some point and you never did finish. Right. Um, uh, you start finding things you didn't know you had, you know, recordings <laughs> or, <Right>. or <laughs> programs, whatever. Um, and also you do uh, these type programs. And I, I have done some uh, little pieces that I have sent over to different to Europe, sometimes to America, here to the opera audiences so that they were still in touch. We are still in touch even though we, we cannot do it yet for real in the hall. Right. So, and also, it, you know, you have a lot of time to to see, to create new projects. Right. 
you know, um, like uh, even today, I, I found so many cassettes of performances from the past that I didn't even know I had. Right. And I, uh, it'd be nice to transfer them to digital media and then put them out there. So some of them are pretty good and uh, you know, should be heard, should be shared. Um, but uh, I wanted to thank Jan very much for giving me this opportunity to, to have access to the Puerto Rican public to the Puerto Rican people who I love very much and uh, so it's, for me it's very important this this one this talk that I'm we're so having. I'm so glad you say that because that's that's really what we have in mind is this is such a great moment to reconnect you who have departed for reasons of course that you needed to because you're furthering your careers you have offers to play and do some wonderful uh, things for yourself and really indirectly for Puerto Rico. So this is our chance to reintroduce you to our people, Absolutely. the people of Puerto Rico and the people in the world who do follow those of us from Puerto Rico. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. <laughs> well, thank you so for being here because it's really important. This is an important thing that we're doing, really. Yeah, yeah. And we have audiences, as you, she said, from all over the world, from Argentina, Ecuador, Mexico, and uh, Spain, Russia. So I, I must say, yes. I must say that I'm also very happy to have as another moderator here, a uh, Mr. Professor uh, Jose Enrique Ramos Santana. Oh, wow. Who Nobody knows no, my whole name. <laughs> why, for a little while, I remember my very first recitals. Yes. I remember playing Vienniavski for them in somewhere in Guaynabo. Right. God knows how old we were. Uh, we were in Aspen together. We were in right. Interlochen together. And it, when we were professionals, we ended up in the UMBC together, in Baltimore together. And now, right now, we're both professors at the Catholic University of America. America in right. You see? Small right. world. Small world. Small world, yeah, world right. coming back together. <laughs> An important. Yes. Amazing. Well, I know him since he was 14 years old. No, no. Oh, yeah. here we go back to all these ages. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Earlier than that. He I graduated when was... he was 15. He was a child prodigy from high school. So. I heard so. Yeah. I did hear so. But I think you need <laughs> to talk about that. Absolutely. Because uh, we all wonder what happens to child prodigies because we're always worried that maybe they're not getting a good uh, background to be normal people, but you look pretty normal to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm normal. As a matter of fact, I want to mention also from the very beginning, see, I don't come from a musical family. I, I am the only musician in my family. Really? My father was a lawyer, my mother was a secretary, so, and neither of them knew classical music. My father was very gifted. He had a wonderful ear, and he could sing very beautifully. But one thing that I want to also mention was my my first violin teacher, who was Pablo Elvira. Oh, ah, yes. And it was everything was a mistake. I went to his house because <laughs> my first teacher, nearly, my first piano teacher fired me <laughs> after about five months of lessons because <laughs> I was. A, Constructive force, you know, in, in with all the other students. We had a little group, and, right? So, at that point, at that point, my father took me to a, a music store because he felt that maybe I didn't know enough theory and solfege, yeah. you know. So, and there they gave him the name of Pablo Elvira. So we went to uh, Maestro Elvira's home and said. Could you teach my my son uh, solfeo and music theory, solfege music theory? And he said, yes, I will teach him, but on one condition, that I teach him violin also. Uh -huh. So he picked the violin for me. I had no idea. <laughs> I said, I have a violin. And he said, no, don't worry. Just come next week. I'll have a half-size violin for you ready. <laughs> 
have it. And right that's here. how I started my violin career. Well, you see. 33, yeah, 33 years later, I was fortunate enough to go to his home again, yes. meet him in the same place where I had my first violin lesson. Ah. And he confessed that he had never taught anybody <laughs> violin. <laughs> but, but, he, but, but, I think but, it's wonderful. But he was violinist, so he felt that he could tell me a, li a little bit of theory <laughs> and talk fish along with the violin. He was more comfortable with that. <laughs> yes. um, I, I, have I a learned... wonderful confession to make, too. Yeah, was My first, first I, studied voice, had... I studied voice at Bennington. Uh, uh, music was I loved. And I was studying uh -huh. with a Hungarian by the name of Leslie Shabai. And he brought me into the studio and he said, well, sing for me. And he gave me some scales and he said, you sit down. I'll sing for you. You save your voice for your babies. <laughs> well, that was the era when women weren't given a chance because we usually yeah. got married, we had children, and then uh, all their time was lost. Our careers were yeah. dumped. And, anyway, so. Well, <laughs> Confessions of the starting of your career. <laughs> yeah. So after that, so, you went to the uh, Escuela Lira de Musica. Yeah, Sorry, with Guillermo months, Figueroa. Yeah, with Guillermo. And, and then after and, that, so, you moved on to the Conservatory of Music. Correct. And, and I must also mention, while I was in the in La Libre, in the School of Music, um, I did had a little guidance on the violin by the, another violin teacher over there was uh, Narciso Emanuele. That's Ramon's. Uh, yes. uh, Senor Emanuele, Professor Emanuele was yeah. very kind to me. I will always be grateful to him for, he, he got me some uh, methods and books for the violin that I could study that right. otherwise I would have never known about at that time. Maybe, maybe later, obviously, I would have, but uh, right. at that time it was a very uh, useful to me too. So I also want to make recognition. May Later, when I was 15, I joined the Puerto Rico Symphony, and he was a member of the second violin section of the symphony. So, um, I must say that, and I said it before in one of the shows, that Mr. Emanuele studied in New York at Manes with Mr. Vladimir Grafman, who is Gary Grafman's father. Mm, and, uh, I see. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All these interwoven connections. Yes. Many starting in Puerto Rico exactly. and yeah. around yep. right. your accomplishments. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> so, you know, after I went to the conservatory to study with uh, Jose Pe Pepito Figueroa, I did four years at the conservatory and then I moved to Baltimore and I studied at the Peabody uh, with a scholarship uh, from both the Instituto de Cultura de Puerto Rico and the Peabody Conservatory. So I had a full scholarship. Um, to study with Brzezinovsky, who was a, a great American violinist and had won the Queen Elizabeth competition in 1956. Right. And uh, I remember I auditioned in Indiana and I, uh, I was going to audition in Curtis. But when I heard him play, um, <laughs> I said, I don't need to go any other place to, to hear to anybody or to play for anybody else. Um, because he, I loved uh, his tone, his musicianship. He was a great, great artist, not only a great violinist. Yeah. So I would say he was my, you know, there's always one person who is your most important teacher. Uh, and he was mine in the violin and the music too. Mm -hmm. Right. And then after that, the rest is history. So why don't yeah. we go and hear a little bit of Jose Cueto's art. We have uh, several examples that he has sent us yesterday. So we can, uh, let's start, whatever. Whatever, we have wherever.
Beautiful. <laughs> Lovely. And you know, can I say that it makes me very um, nostalgic because that's the piece we start the uh, music festival in August the Hen with it Henry Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. The first piece played for years always has been that Pablo Casals beautiful piece which of course little Campeche sitting here and the birds makes me think of. Ah, well, <laughs> One of the reasons I, I picked it because I knew you had the birds in second. They're here. Um, because of, uh, I think it's a very moving and touching piece, especially now in the right. times that we're experiencing now. Right. You know, it's something for your soul, for your. Right. It, yes. You know. right. Also, that gives us a window for us to talk about your affiliation with Maestro Pablo Casals and your experience, because everybody was touched. You're from this generation of the first uh, offsprings mm -hmm. of Casal's seed in the island. He uh, planted the conservatory, the symphony orchestra, and you were the first um, uh, bloom of this, this harvest. Yeah, I, actually, I played for him only once um, at the conservatory. He came and listened to a few students. I think I was a freshman. That was like 1970, 1970. I was 15, I think. And uh, that's when I met him. I met Martita Casas, who I'm also very grateful to because while I was studying at Peabody, I got an invitation from her to play for uh, Schneider, Alexander Schneider, that was a concertmaster of the Casals Festival Orchestra. So I went to New York to Alexander Schneider's home. I auditioned for him, and that summer was my first summer of 13 summers with the Casals Festival Orchestra. That's wonderful. Uh, so. And I remember Casal said something to me, and uh, I didn't understand anything. So I was like, rrr, 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 rrr. <laughs> I, I looked at Martita. <laughs> You're being so honest. I think it's wonderful. it's wonderful. A lot of people wouldn't admit that. But, yeah, but it's true. So, <laughs> Casal spoke said, to me. Uh, I said, no, Martita, <laughs> what did he say? And she said, she understood everything. So she said, oh. He said that your third finger is always a little bit flat. Okay. <laughs> well, at least you got the message. Yes. <laughs> you could have missed it. Yes, later on. If there hadn't been a translator. <laughs> oh. I performed with him uh, the Pesebre, the Oratorio at Pesebre at the Casals Festival. So I was a member of the conservatory choir. Uh -huh. The chorus of the conservatory. And that's when, that's when I performed under the baton of... Pablo Casals. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Oh, our Casals stories are wonderful. And oh. uh, after you graduate, tell us all the things you have done so much in your career. Uh, give well, us some highlights. Okay. Well, my career is has been really interesting or uh, different. You know, you you see careers of soloists that are very successful from very uh, young age. They get management, they play all over the world, mostly as uh, soloists, sometimes chamber music, but that's it. They, they're concentrated in classical music and so forth. Uh, my career was much different. Um, as I said, I, I didn't come from a musical family. Um, I graduated at Peabody. As soon as I graduated at Peabody, I became a concertmaster of the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra mm. under the direction of Leon Fleischer. Wow. Leon Fleischer was the orchestra at that time. Mm -hmm. um, then, in a couple of years later, concertmaster of the Baltimore Opera, where I had the opportunity to work with an incredible amount of great conductors because the opera didn't have a, 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 a steady one conductor. So they were all um, guest, guest conductors. Guest conductors. Yeah. They were all guest conductors. Some better than others. Some very very fine conductors, mm -hmm. like uh, I remember Julius Rudel or mm -hmm. or Coppola or there was a conductor of Leipzig, 
eh, Alexander Schander, con, con, conductor de Leipzig Opera, uh, Cesare Alfieri, from La Scala, mm -hmm. I mean, Andrea Licata, from el Teatro Bellini in Sicily. Wow. So every time I got to play with all these people and all the singers, I was able to play the last public performance of a full opera by Carlo Bergonzi, ah. which was with Sir D'Amore. Uh -huh. And I remember going backstage, you know, to say what an honor. And he says to me, oh, Maestro Cueto. She, you know, I, I didn't know that even he, he knew my name or anything. He was, he was that kind of old, old school. He knew exactly who the concert master of the orchestra was, who, who oh, really? he was looking at me, okay? So in that same, in that same venue at the Baltimore Opera in the Lyric Theater, which is an incredible theater in Baltimore, mm -hmm. that's where Rachmaninoff premiered his Paganini variations with the Philadelphia Orchestra in that, yeah. same, that same theater. Um, I was able to work with four great Puerto Rican singers, mm -hmm. uh, Justino Diaz, uh, Toñito Barasorda, yes. uh, Cesar Hernández, yes. and uh, Pablito Elvira, the son of my first violin teacher. Violin teacher. <laughs> it was, that was a great anecdote because he was doing Barber of Seville. Yes. And when he went on stage, I looked at the pit, he saw me and he couldn't believe it. He almost fell, he almost fell in, into the pit. He, because he, he had to get closer and closer. Cueto, is that you? Jose Miguel? Is that you? <laughs> I don't know, it was like 10 years later than, than you know, 10 or 15 years later than, than when I, I had used to see him every, every week at, as his father's home for my lesson. Right. And I used to tell him to stop playing the trumpet because he was a salsa player. Oh, a yes, very good trumpet. Right. Yes. Yeah, and he used to disturb me, my lesson. So I used to scream at him you know like so <laughs> as, as I said, life you know life is you know you never know you never exactly. know what happened um and so that was uh, a, it, actually in the same opera i worked with a maestro louis salerno uh, a wonderful um, uh, italo-american director and recently about three four years ago he called me because he had been working with domingo at the kennedy center opera house yes and he said you know i'm going to create a new opera company and i want you to be my concert master oh ah. wonderful so i well if it happens great I, i'm game with fantastic so just about two years ago we had the premiere with uh, fanchula del west uh -huh. um uh of the maryland lyric opera um, which is a, a wonderful company. It already had very great reviews, and uh, we the next opera we do will hopefully will happen in September, uh, and it, the the scenic <laughs> director will be, yeah the scenic director will be uh, uh, Ruggiero Raimondi. He, oh. He's going to come and work with us. Um, so you know all these things, but so opera has been a, a big part of my life been concert master with Baltimore Opera and later with the Kennedy Center Opera House, the Washington Opera, right. and all other opera houses like Annapolis Opera, some lesser uh, houses. But um, that's one one aspect. Then every time popular artists, great popular artists came either to Washington, D.C., the National Theater or Wolf Trap or uh, Baltimore at the Mechanic Theater, or the Hippodrome, you know, all the venues that do Broadway shows and things like that. I, I had first call for all of that. So I, I remember working with uh, people like Tony Bennett, a fantastic guy. We had some, <laughs> really? yeah. wow. Barbara Streisand, uh, Barbara Streisand, uh, who was not as nice. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, uh, Julia Andrews. Julia <laughs> Andrews, yeah. Julia Andrews. Sat on my lap. I, I, I must she say, sat on your lap, <laughs> Julie Andrews. Wow. We'll make that story a little that, that, bit longer. That, I think that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> so she sat that's, in your lap. So I've done a lot of, of, of that type of uh, playing too. Popular, you know, popular artists, very, very fine popular, that, that jazz or or just popular. 
Uh, also, in my career, ever since I, I finished in Puerto Rico, which was the first time I played with Nancy Roldan, wonderful Argentine pianist, we have had a duo, which is now over 40 years mm. young. Yeah. And with, <laughs> I like with, that. With, Hi, Glow. I see you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Glow. Ramirez de Arellano. I see you watching. Yeah. <laughs> with, with that, with, with the duo, we yeah. have played all over the Americas and yeah. uh, Europe. So, uh, and created, we, we created some chamber ensembles. We had uh, uh, one called Pentat, which was a piano quintet, and we did a, the a maiden voyage of the SS Norway. We, we, we got in uh, in Philadelphia. We ended up in North Cap, Norway. Ooh. And in the process, we played concerts in, in, on, the, on the ship. Um, we had to do a whole total of two concerts in 23 days. So it was uh, quite demanding, as you can see. Yeah. And um, tell us a little bit about uh, the... I know you, I remember, because I went to hear one of the concerts, you were the concert master of the Kennedy Center Chamber Players on their Leon Fleischer, right? Yeah. Also. Yes. Uh, you did yeah, that for that was, a, uh, a chamber, orchestra, chamber orchestra and chamber ensembles. Right. Um, the Center. Um, and uh, in, in chamber music, I also have played with uh, when Gervais de Payer, the great clarinetist, came oh, yes. who retired from from Lincoln Center. Right. He he moved to DC, and he had been the founder of the Mellos Ensemble in England. So he recreated the Mellos Ensemble in Washington DC, and he called me to be his concertmaster in that in that chamber That's group, wonderful. which I did with him. That's um, I have been I have been very lucky in, in chamber music. I played chamber music with a lot of great people, including my teacher, uh, Karen Total, which was a Primrose yes. assistant professor at, at uh, Peabody. Uh, Stephen Cates, yes. fantastic, uh, uh, least winner of the Tchaikovsky competition. Yeah. Um, uh, Viris Lai at the the conservatory, who was the principal. A cellist of the Baltimore Symphony, a great Hungarian cellist. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, in chamber music, I had the opportunity to play with some fantastic. I I can I cannot say anything. You know, I've been very lucky that way. I, I while I was at Peabody, I was uh, chosen to be a soloist in a series called Masters of Today and Tomorrow mm -hmm. with uh, Ruggiero Ricci right. and my teacher. Uh, right. Sanofsky, we played the, the triple concerto of Vivaldi. Of Vivaldi, and so, right, right. Uh, Wonderful. With the orchestra, and Fiora Contino was the conductor for that particular. Mm -hmm. She was in at Aspen also. Fiora was in yeah. Aspen where we were in Aspen also, yes, yes. Oh. And yeah. that was another. Rattling yes. off these wonderful names, yeah. and, you know, uh, just to point out, you're, all, you're talking about geniuses. Everybody you've mentioned. You're all geniuses. Well, we have that privilege. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that, a nice genius. To work with something. people like that. You're yeah. fun people, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. I, I don't think I don't think the new generation gets that opportunity. No, no. So, so much. The, 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 the whole thing has changed. Times have changed. Yes. And uh, I remember uh, when I went to, to school, if you had asked me about professors, Vali, who would you like to study with? I could have named a lot of people, you know, uh, Gingold, there was Chomsky, there was Rabinov, there was right. Sanofsky, there was, you know, a, a, an incredible amount of people, Delay. Right. Uh, um, today, it's a lot harder to, right. to find extraordinary teachers like that. Very you smart. go to certain schools and you don't know who you're going to to study with, right. or if they have somebody that is a big name, you're studying with their assistant right. for the whole semester, you might get one or two lessons with that particular person. Right. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. it's, why it's, do it's you different. think so? Why? Why? Because there are too many students, there's too much. What's happening? What changed? Yeah, there are, there are 
There are more students, but I, if you want my honest answer, is I believe that there are less uh, greater players and, and less greater teachers because when they died, their assistants took over and then their assistants passed or retired and their assistants of the assistants took over and everything became it, it, even even the performance uh, yes. style to right. even the performance yeah. style today uh, uh, yeah and and uh, uh, there is less individuality right. you know I, I must say the level of technical level of performance today, today. is unbelievable right. unbelievable yeah. you hear great playing you know technically speaking from from kids doesn't matter. They can be 11 years old, 10 years old, fantastic violinist or pianist or whatever instrument. But in terms of the musical right. depth and interpretative right. uh, powers yes. and development of the right. musical styles and so on and so forth, that is what is not so much. Do, uh, do, do you think that it might have something to do with the fact that there is so much music available? for our youngsters to listen to. I mean, YouTubes and, and recordings, what, uh, perhaps uh, mm. their minds no. are muddled or uh, being left alone, as some of these geniuses we're talking about you know, may have just developed their I own think, style. I think a lot has to do with competitions, too. Mm -hmm. There are a lot more competitions. I mean, you are three years old, five years old, you're already in a competition. Really? Your yeah. father, your mother, your parents put you in a Somebody's competition. Somebody put you there. Right. Uh, yeah, and these competitions really, Change you know, at some the point, direction. At some, yeah, at some point the competition was a good thing for, to advance your career. Uh -huh. But they have become something where you want to win the competition. It's about winning. It's not about music making. You know, it's about being faster, louder, more accurate. Uh, you know, and, and the music goes by the by the sideways. You know, it's, it's, I don't know. It's it's, it's a, a lot of more emphasis so with different put aesthetics now. Aesthetics, yeah, yes, aesthetics. Yeah, absolutely. yeah different absolutely. aesthetics. Yes. Yeah. Well, that is a yeah. very interesting point mm -hmm. to be considering. I mean, really, as we're getting deep into the um, to the music and you who create it and though you who are talking about those you've studied with and all this is a very interesting point to be making and to hear it from you that you feel that it's not up to the level that you remember or is it just because we're getting older <laughs> yeah. I remember my grandparents saying, oh, it was never like this when <laughs> it be a little of that, you know. <laughs> yeah, we had, we had uh, some great and not so great artists, so I think that the level it has even out more, but it's, it's very consistent, but at the same time, it's, uh, there's something lacking in, in that. Yeah, I agree. It's a give and take. And yeah. One thing, one thing. Even from when I studied the conservatory in Puerto Rico, for example, I had chamber music studied with Adolfo of Noposov. Right. Was a, a beautiful cellist and the brother of Ricardo Noposov, which was a great violinist. Right. And from day one, he said, "Okay, we are going to play uh, the Dubki Trio of Vorderat." Let's say, but he was playing with me. Yeah. He himself, right. you know, that's that's how you learn <laughs> right. when you have right. to play with somebody like that, that is already an artist, a seasoned performer. Right. You you learn these things. I don't see that happening that often in the or at all in the in the schools today, the conservatories today, no. you know, no. I don't know. You see a lot of master classes and, right. and things like that. But the thing is to tell somebody do this, do that. And another thing is to actually do it with them. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, the first time I played with Stephen Cates, by the way, uh, we did the Mendelssohn Trio with Nancy Rodan. And it was for a class at uh, Hopkins University. And I'm playing, we're rehearsing for this. We had like two rehearsals or so. But in the middle of the first rehearsal, I'm asking myself, wait a minute, why, I am, why am I not 
changing my bow like he's changing his bow. Because he he was seamless, he was beautiful. His boat. I said, but mine is not like that. What's what's going on? So, I realized I was letting go a little bit of the pressure on the boat as I was doing the the boat change. I said, oh, he's not doing that. Yeah. And then I stopped doing that. I I kept the pressure even. And then my boat, my phrasing, everything was so much better. Just just like that. Because right. you were beside was, him. Yeah. He because didn't I was tell you. Uh, that, you yeah. noticed. It's, it's true. Yeah. You noticed. Yeah, yeah. We and had it, this this luck, you know. We had this this type of luck. Yeah. I remember uh, uh, my teacher Adel Marcus the first time she sat down to demonstrate. I have never heard piano playing like that. I still do, haven't heard anybody like that. But uh, that's beside the point. That was the most magical, spiritual with death type of playing on a simple scriabin uh, prelude. And I, I still tr striving for that in my own way, not imitating him, but in my own way, in my own musicianship. And these are the goals these people set for us, you know? Um, and then, of course, uh, Whatever she demonstrated was wonderful, but later on, Alicia de la Rocha, which will have an opportunity tomorrow to interview her daughter and her do daughter, a tribute yes, to her, it's be sat, we were, I played for her son Spanish music in, I remember the festival in Manes, and she, we were talking, she liked it very much, and she says, do you know this piece, Las Vegas? And then all of a sudden she started playing La Vega by Albanese, and I started seeing these little hands came these incredible textures and layers. And, and you know, I don't think she was even practicing that much anymore, but it was such a ingrained, I mean, she's such an artist. And, yeah, that's, uh, and I'm saying like, learned. oh my God, I'm here next to Alicia de la Rocha. And she's playing for me, not, not great performance and Lincoln concern to Carnegie Hall, a personal, and I'm seeing what she's doing. It was the same type of thing. Well, maybe things might be getting a little bit back to that. By the way, Margarita Gandia, thank you for turning, tuning in to us. It's wonderful. I'm so happy that you're here. And Nilda Comas. Nilda, Seida, Garcia, Seida. It's, it's everybody wonderful so to know watching. that you're all caring, that yeah. we care so much about music. And that we're trying Let's to hear a little bit more oh, about uh, Jose's art. Vidalita by Alberto Williams. Vamos a hacerlo, pero lo último. Thank you. 
Lovely. <laughs> yeah. <Lovely>. Wonderful. <laughs> um, Very good. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's amazing. We have uh, Kiko. I I wanted to to say a little bit. We were talking about influences and 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 people that make you better musicians. Mm -hmm. I remember doing a tour in. I was in Hungary, playing some solos with uh, uh, the Saint Mary's Ensemble and with uh, Vladimir Land, the great oboist who had been uh, principal with uh, Saint Petersburg Symphony, the Petersburg Philharmonic, and. After the concert, we went to a restaurant and listened to a primas, a, a virtuoso gypsy violinist. Um, and you know, the Chardas by Monty that yeah. everybody played. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, he, he played something different, but he did a one glissando. I mean, he had been into the piece for about five seconds and he did the first glissando. <laughs> And in that first glissando, I learned how the glissandi in all this gypsy music were supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. and, and what I was doing wrong by playing, by doing the glissando in the classical style of glissando. Exactly, right. Okay. And it took, it took about 10 seconds of listening to him to say, oh my God. Absolutely. I mean, I had the uh, you know, goosebumps. goosebumps. Uh, yeah. Yes, thinking. yeah. Oh my God. It was God. amazing. Realizing. Uh, so that was a master class. It was right. like a te yeah. second master. But that's that's what I'm what I'm talking about. And and funny enough, with Vladimir, uh, eventually he became a conductor, and he was in Saint Petersburg conducting the Saint Petersburg Symphony, which was a, like the third or a symphony in the in the city because they had five orchestras in that city. Mm -hmm. And he asked me to record with him uh, some concerti. He, he asked me which I wanted to do. I said, why don't we do, I had just performed the Castel Nuovo uh, Tedesco Concerto number two. And I said, let's do an album of Italian concerto. Mm -hmm. So I, got, I, I learned for that particular recording, the Respighi Concerto Gregoriano. Yeah. And I did an arrangement of a piece by Carlos Guastavino, uh -huh. which is another great musician that I had met in his home in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. Right. And I, I made an arrangement for strings and solo violin, and all that is in that particular CD, right. that album. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. You, you've done two with the St. Petersburg's in Russia uh, uh, recordings. Yes, yes, with them. Yes. Yeah, and of very interesting because there are not well-known war horses of the violin repertoire. There are pieces that are wonderful and yet not known and that's i think is a great so, contribution one to one thing one thing that i said when i recorded the castel nuevo tedesco at that time of my recording mm -hmm. the only available recordings of that piece were heifetz oh perlman's uh-huh really so yeah. i figure even if i get a bad review as long as they mention heifetz and perlman <laughs> there i'll be in the, in the same <laughs> <part. You> know, <laughs> No. <laughs> and maybe not quite up to Perlman, but yeah, pretty <laughs> no. that's a terrible attitude. Sorry. Uh, that's, great. that's great. Oh my goodness. Do wow. we have another? You know, I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mention Concert Artists of Baltimore, which was a, a, an orchestra, a chamber yeah. orchestra. I was their concert master for the whole, from the very beginning to the very end of the orchestra, was about 31 years. Right. And with them, I, 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 I recorded the Menotti Violin Concerto uh -huh. with them uh, also. I, right. Again, all, another piece that should be played a lot more. Right. You hear the Barber Concerto yeah. a lot. The Menotti the wrote Menotti. it because Menotti. No, the Menotti, you, the people don't even know he wrote one. Right. And the thing is, not only did he write one, but it's a beautiful concerto. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Well, we'll just have to pass, pass the word around when everybody gets together. Yeah. Menotti. Yeah. Menotti. Remember. <laughs> yeah, Maybe you come work. to Puerto Rico and play with a symphony someday, if there is a uh, symphony. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're struggling yes, with that. Yes, that would yeah. be nice. You know, yeah, my yeah, debut yeah. with the symphony was in 1981. Uh -huh. Then I played when we did the four violinists, the, the, the four seasons of Vivaldi. Yeah. And it was Guillermo, Henry Hutchinson, 
Narciso Figueroa and myself, right. uh, the four Musketeers. Um, and uh, that was the last time I played with them. I, I don't think it was, it was like 1990, maybe. Right. I don't know. But it's about time so, for you to come back to your home and play with us. It, it, <laughs> time to come home and play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do we have another short uh, video, Dauris or so Jose?
Wow. Bravo. Oh, we see Lisa Gleach are watching. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us. Michelle and everybody Cook. who's been watching us and been sharing this wonderful, fine violinist, Jose Cueto, and the art of violin. Put on my glasses. Violin. Ursula Oaks. Oh, my goodness. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much you for so being much. here. Yeah. Makes us feel like we're doing something important. Yeah. We're I think all sharing, in a family. Sharing, and sharing the artists the with talents family and talents of and Puerto Rico. Right. Yeah. And bringing them home to talk to you. Absolutely. I think makes a big difference because That's a lot right. a lot of a lot of people don't know that you guys are out there working so hard and mm -hmm. and making Puerto Rico look good, feel good mm -hmm. and proud. So it's yeah. time to bring you home and share you Thank you. with the rest. Uh, <laughs> now that you mentioned that, I have one last anecdote. It's with Chita Rivera. <laughs> I, played yes. a, I, played a, I played a show with her really? not too long ago, maybe three years ago, I, in Florida. Uh, really? I was concert master, concert master of this orchestra from, from D.C., uh, but we had this concert in Florida, and it was... Uh, with her and she, she, there was a big violin solo. I mean, big, about six solo, six minutes. And uh, so after the concert, we are at the hotel. She, I saw that she was with Tommy Tune and, and herself in the table. I went to say hello. I said, you know, it's nice to meet you. I said, oh, you, you're the violinist. Oh, yeah, that was wonderful. This thing. I said, yes. Eh. Well, I just want to say hello. I'm from originally from Santurce, but oh my God, you're Puerto Rican. Uh, had I known, I just did this program in Carnegie Hall, and you know that that violin is the one that that plays sitting down. He, it's okay, but you are so much better. You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Oh, that's great to hear. <laughs> I'm just glad I met you. Uh, <laughs> we live in <laughs> Well, see, these are little things that uh, people should know, and it's fun to share with you. And the you audience speak will up love and tell us. Yeah, she exactly. told me better. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. like better. Anecdotes. Yeah, priceless. He priceless. stands up. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so oh. much, Jose, to be oh, it's uh, with us tonight. Visit this with wonderful you visit about into your, your living room, and you were in our living room and also and in the living room of many you. people around the world all thank the you so things you've been doing all yeah. my love of thank all the you. best you We're too here. <laughs> we'll see you We're soon here. absolutely we'll all right keep doing thank you. Care. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. i tell you it's such fun to bring these guys home i know and, and they've done them. so much oh, we don't done even so know much about and you know guys. i think a lot a lot of times, I don't. I don't think people know no. how hard they're working. Yeah, how under many the things they have accomplished. Puerto Rico and being mm -hmm. so talented, exactly. and being so yeah. Yeah. giving, and being so special. Right. They're special, Absolutely. special people. Absolutely. You guys are special people. <laughs> Thank and you. And I'm glad <laughs> you that too. we're able to, <laughs> you know, to, yeah. to share what you're all doing. Yes. Absolutely. With those Wonderful. who tune in and and choose to listen about it because it's there's a lot going on yeah. Puerto Ricans we work hard and we've done a lot and I think that I consider myself after 60 years I better be Puerto Rican you are <laughs> I'm certainly <laughs> nothing else <laughs> when years ago uh, when I was married to Manuco yes. uh, Margarita's brother right. and people would say where is she from? Where are you from? And he'd say, hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, tomorrow we have a tribute to the great Alicia de la Rocha, the great Spanish uh, pianist. And uh, she was one of the giants of the 20th century uh, in pianism. And then Thursday we'll have Hexua Lee, a wonderful young uh, pianist, artist that will join us from Shanghai. She's now, a that one we're trying to figure out how to do because yeah. there's 12 it's hours. 12 hour so difference. So we I'm have to not sure. Record it or it, pre record yeah, We're going to have to pre record yeah, that yeah. one because I don't think you want to tune in at 6 a.m. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway, wonderful to have you all so with us. Great Thank to have you so join us tomorrow for, for a wonderful caring about music program. and 
um, being with us because it makes it all worthwhile. Absolutely. Sharing the music. That's what Thank we're about. You. Thank you. I'll so. see you all tomorrow. Nice to bye. have you with us. Bye bye.